Hi dear students hope you are all doing well and safe welcome to the practical course of linear control system here's your lab instructor Nishita Alwal agenda of this experiment include seven different sections lab objective equipment needed theoretical background of the experiment software implementation results and discussion part conclusion and the task assigned Objective of today's experiment is to analyze the location of poles and zeros using root locus in LabVIEW. Equipment needed for the experimentation is LabVIEW software installed on the personal computer. Firstly, we have to look at the theoretical background of this experiment. Root locus technique is an important technique for the analysis and design of our control system. Root locus of a feedback system is the graphical representation in the complex S plane of the possible location of its closed loop poles for varying values of certain system parameter like K. Root locus technique in control system was first introduced in the year 1948 by Evans. Root locus technique gives an idea about the absolute stability and to some extent the relative stability of a control system. It can also be used to describe quantitatively the performance of a system as various parameters are changed. It gives graphical representation of a system transient response and also the stability of the system. What the root locus method is and how to use this method to aid the control system design and analysis. Suppose you have a system that made up of multiple known parameters and one known unknown parameter or varying parameter k and since you don't know that one parameter you can't whether the system is stable or unstable. It meets your design criteria or not. So if your system can be described by this transfer function as we can see in the channel uh, in the slide basically the journal transfer function so you can see that there is one unknown parameter or coefficient k and you should be able to see that by changing that parameter you are going to be changing the location of poles of the system remember that poles of the system are values of s that cause the transfer function to be divided by zero or to be blow up to infinity so that if I put the transfer function in the transfer function of the system k equals to zero this collapse to t as means the characteristic equation of the system denominator of the system equals to zero since the roots of denominator are the poles of g of s those are the close to poles for k equals to 0. When k equals to infinity, then we have basically roots of numerator which are the zeros of g of s. You can see that in the characteristic equation, we have 1 plus k g of s equals to 0. Value of k does in fact move the root of the polynomial what value of k should be choose to meet the required system performance that is having poles in the correction location correct location basically in the s plane this is basically the designing of the system what is the effect of the variation of k on the poles of the system that is how sensitive is the system to a value of k that is slightly of what you have predicted this is the effect of variation of unknown parameter on the stability of a system. Root locus can be drawn using the open loop information of the system without computing the closed loop poles. Suppose we have a system in which k is the unknown variable. So we can check how k affects the stability and transient response of the system. So here we have the pole zero plot of the system transfer function for k equals to 10 at the left and k equals to 200 at the right. 
we can uh, say that uh, by changing the gain value our system move towards the unstability so uh, as we set the value of uh, k higher so our system move towards the unstability so the uh, evaluating of the value of k gain is very important for analyzing the stability of the system for analyzing the transient response of the system here we have one question as we have already studied about the root harvest criterion then why would we use root locus instead of root harvest a short and simple uh, answer is root harvest criterion is used to determine stability of a system and the gain for which the system will become unstable on the other hand root locus is quite literally the path followed by the poles and zeros of a system root locus is superior to root harvest criteria in the way that it provides a complete mapping of poles and zeros as a function of gain of the system from looking at root locus plot you can judge the system response at various gains the stability margins the initial frequency and damping frequency of the system and more root locus is also used to design controllers of every system steps we have to follow for the implementation of root locus are step 1 determine all the open loop os and zeros of open loop transfer function step 2 defining the starting and ending point of the root locus step 3 find out number of branches of root locus step 4 determine the direction of branches step 5 find out the break away point step 6 find out the high root nokai branches for high values of k step 7 determine the point where the root locus branches intersects the imaginary axis step 8 determine the angle of departure and arrival in case of complex poles step 9 determine the values of k in root locus rule 1 to determine all the poles and zeros of open loop transfer function and plot them in s plane as we can see the s plane in our slide where s plane basically consists of real and imaginary axis poles can be shown in the form of cross and zeros can be shown in the form of circles step 2 is basically the starting and ending points of the root locus the root locus starts from the open loop poles or k equals to 0 k is basically the gain of the system and the root locus terminates on either finite open loop zeros or k equals to infinity third rule is the number of branches of root locus if the pole in the system greater than 0 the number of branches equals to the number of poles if zeros in the system greater than the poles then the number of branches equals to the number of zeros for example if we have poles equals to 3 in our system and zeros equals to 5 in our system then number of branches is 5 means the zeros in the system because zeros greater than at the number of poles in the system so number of branches will be equal to the number of zeros and two branches from the five branches will start from infinity because we have the difference between pole and zero equals to 2 so two branches will start from infinity and the remaining three branches basically start from open loop poles okay all branches will be terminate at five finite location of zeros now if we take the example in which five basically uh, the number of poles and zeros is basically three in the system so the number of branches will be equal to the number of poles because poles greater than the number of zeros so number of branches equals to the five and the difference between pole and zeros 
is two so two branches will start from poles and the three branches basically shows the uh, location of zeros so they will also start from the upper loops and all branches will basically terminates at infinity rule 4 basically demo states that the direction of branches of a root locus on the real axis a branch of root locus lies on the real axis if the total number of open loop poles and zeros to the right side of the point is odd number. Let's take an example so you can understand it. Take one point to the right side of the pole and take one point to the left hand side of the pole. Same case for this one. And check that if there is the number of open loop poles and zeros to the right hand side of the point is odd then the root locus direction will be on the real axis so if we check for point one then there will be basically two poles and one zero means the odd number so the direction of root locus basically branch basically on the real axis towards this side is this side and it basically will be stopped on the infinity and then if we see that at this point how many poles and zeros towards the right side then basically at this point there is number of zeros and pole equals to the even number so no branch will be on the real axis right this axis and if we see for this pole basically this pole and this point p3 so towards the right side of p3 there is one pole means the odd number odd number so if there is odd number then the branches basically will be on the real axis and the limit of uh, uh, this branch basically which is towards the this point means that towards the next zero and stop right there and if we see that at point p4 on the right side of point p4 there is no poles and zero so there will be no branch on the real axis of the s plane so this is how we can show the uh, branches on the rural axis in root locus. Rule 5 is basically the break away point. When two branches move towards each other on the real axis, coincident point is called the break away point. Break away point occurs between two adjacent open loop poles on the real axis. If we talk about the current post location on the uh, S plane then we can see that port P1 have a branch on the right hand side and port 2 have a branch on the left hand side. So these two branches basically are adjacent to each other so the point where they meet is called the break away point. We can find out the break away point by differentiating open loop transfer function with respect to s and then equating it to 0. As the value of k will be increased, so the root locus will move away from the poles and zeros of the network. For higher values of k, the root locus branch is approximated by the asymptotes which are basically the curve where the curve basically touches to the real axis. Curve is the root locus curve. So uh, here we have the uh, formula for the determination of intersection point of asymptotes in which uh, the summation of P is the summation of all poles of the open loop transfer function, summation of Z is summation of all zeros of open loop transfer function. P shows the total number of poles. Z shows the total number of zeros. 
x equals to the intersection point of asymptotes with the real axis. So let's take an example uh, a system um, in which basically we have uh, poles equals to 0, 1, minus 1 and minus 2 and zeros, two zeros equals to 1 and 4. Put down the values of poles and zeros into the equation. So we have x means the intersection point of asymptotes with real axis equals to minus 8. Asymptotes are drawn at point x making an angle with the real axis. Angle can be calculated by using the, this formula and shows t or equals t 0 1 2 and so on p minus c minus 1. p in the formula shows the number of poles. poles z shows the number of zeros in the root local. So the rule number 7 is to determine the points where the root locus branches intersect the imaginary axis. So there are basically uh, two methods for uh, the determination of uh, uh, points where the root locus branches intersect the imaginary uh, axis. So first one method is basically uh, the point determination of points by the help of by putting the values of j omega into the s in the characteristic equation. For example, we have a system like this and we have a characteristic equation in this form. So that if we put down S is equals to J omega in the equation, so we have after simplification of this equation, we have basically two terms. This is basically the real term and this is the imaginary term. Put real term equals to zero and put imaginary term equals to zero. Simplify this equation so we have at the end the value of W and the value of K so that we can uh, by this method means by putting the value of S is equals to J omega we are uh, able to find out the values of frequency in the network and the unknown parameter K in the network. Second method is by determination of uh, root Harvard criteria. So root Harvard criteria, we have already studied that, uh, is helpful for determining the stability of the poles, uh, means our systems. So uh, if we write down, uh, down the uh, equation, characteristic equation variables in the root table, then we have the highest number of uh, variable present in the network equals to s equal uh, by 3 s to the power 3 so 1 right there skip this value 6 right there then s care skip this value and put 5 right there then skip this value and put k right there and for s1 there is no further elements so we will uh, take basically 5 into 6 multiply by a minus k into 1 divided by 5 so we have this term uh, so we have to find out the values of k in the network. Uh, for this, uh, we basically uh, take this term and uh, uh, put this one equals to zero. As we have already studied in the rules that uh, uh, for this method, we have to put the uh, transfer function of differentiation of the transfer function of the network with respect to s equals to zero. So I will put uh, uh, the equation equals to zero then uh, I have already uh, seen that uh, um, the value of uh, k equals to 30. So I will put the uh, value of k equals to 30 right there and then I will be able to uh, find out the values of s in the network. If we have complex poles in our network, then how we can find out the angle of departure and arrival? So rule number 8 gives information about this. Departure angle from complex pole is given by listed uh, the formula below and phi p basically equals to the number of sum of all the angles subtended by all the other poles. 
phi z equals to sum of all the angles subtended by all the zeros. Angle of arrival is also listed in the slide. Rule number 9 is the determination of the value of k on the root locus. So, the value of k is the ratio between the product of length of factors drawn from the pose of upper loop transfer function to p and the product of length of vectors drawn from the zeros of open loop transfer function to p. Example of root locus technique for the understanding of this uh, stability method is listed in the slide. Sketch the root locus of unity feedback system with open loop transfer function as k varied from 0 to infinity. g of s h of s equals to k divided by s into s plus 2 into s plus 3. So step 1 for the solution of this problem is finding the number of poles and zeros. There is no zeros in the current examples. If we have basically three poles in the current scenario s equals to 0, s equals to minus 2 and s equals to minus 3 at k equals to 0. So the characteristic or equation of the current system is this one. So step 2, starting and ending point of root locus. Root locus basically starts from k equals to 0 and will be terminated at k equals to infinity. Root locus starting point is basically according to the number of poles in the system and it will terminate according to the number of zeros in the system. Step 3 is direction of root locus branches. First, if we have to uh, represent two points on the right hand side and on the left hand side of one pole and then shows the direction or basically the number of uh, uh, branches on the real axis. If there is the odd number of poles towards the right side of the point then it means the branches will be shown on the real axis. If no odd point means the even point then no branch will be shown. So if we take the point number 3, then at point number 3, we have right side of the equation basically contains 1, 2, and 3 poles. So that we have uh, the direction of root locus branches towards the real axis like this one and it moved towards the minus infinity. And now if we take point 3, then at point 3, we have basically 1 and 2 poles. Means the even number of poles. So, so that the direction of root locus branches does not happen and on the real axis. So uh, that uh, there is no further arrangement of branches. And now if we take the point number 2, this point basically, then there is uh, on the right hand side of uh, this point, we have 1 and 2 poles. Means 2 number of poles. So the even number of poles, so no branch basically will be occur on the real axis. Now, if we take the point number 2 on the right hand side of this pole, then there is only one pole, means the uh, our number of pole. So, the root locus branches will be occur on the real axis, like this one. And now, if we talk about the point number P1, then there is one pole also on the right hand side of uh, this point so the direction of root locus branches towards this one and if we take this point then no uh, direction uh, of root locus branches will be occur right there because there is no uh, pole on the right hand side of this point so now we have basically this step number four break away point Breakaway point is the basically the intersection point of the two branches of the two poles. So where two branches of the two poles intersect, this is basically the breakaway point. We can find out the breakaway point by two methods. First is basically this, the supposition type of method. And uh, second one is this, basically the you know, properly uh, the differentiation of transfer function with respect to s equals to 0. 
so now if we take of uh, this supposition criteria then we have 1 by x means s4 1 by x plus 2 means this one 4 and plus 1 by x plus 3 there is this 4 equals to 0. So now if we take this term towards uh, this and uh, uh, just uh, take this terminology and we have to find out uh, the proper equation of uh, this method then we have x square plus 5x plus 6 plus x square plus 3x plus x square plus 2x equals to 0 so that uh, uh, we can say x equals to minus 0 0.784 and x equals to minus 2.549 and now if we take dg of s divided by ds equals to 0 then g of s is this value basically and we have the characteristic equation 3x square plus 10x plus 6 equals to 0. So at the end we have the same values as we have achieved in this equation. x equals to uh, minus 0 0.784 and x equals to minus 2.509. The breakaway points basically. So in the step 5. Basically, determine the isentroids on the real axis. Isentroids can be found out by the inter intersection point and by the angle of them. So, intersection point of the isentroids can be found out by this formula. We will basically need the summation of poles and summation of zeros and number of poles and number of zeros. Uh, we have number of poles uh, in this equation is. Uh, uh, basically 3 and there is no number of 0 so equals to 0 uh, summation of 4 equals to minus 5 and summation of 0 equals to 0 so we have x equals to minus 1.667 means the intersection point of some doors equals to x equals to 1.667 now if we take angle of doors, then we have this type of formula m is equals to 0 1 2 towards the P minus Z minus 1. P equals to number of poles, Z equals to number of zero. In the current scenario, we have three poles and zeros, no zero. So 3 minus 1 equals to 2. So we have values of M towards 0 from 0 to 2. 0, 1, 2. For M equals to 0, we have theta equals to 60 by putting the values in this equation. For M equals to 1, we have theta 180. For M equals to 2, we have theta 300. At uh, basically step 6, we will have the intersection of root locus branches with imaginary axis. So, imaginary axis, basically we have the characteristic equation. There is uh, one method for determining the intersection point of the root locus branches with the imaginary axis is the root Harvard's criteria. So, we will write down the highest number polynomial on the first column S cube, as we can see in the equation. So put the coefficient of s cube right there, right there, skip this value and put 6 right there. Then uh, take s square, skip this value and put 5 right there, skip this value and put k right there. Then uh, we have uh, multiply this term by this term, this term by this term and divide by 5. 30 minus k divided by 5. So s uh, raised to power 0 equals to k. So that we have 5 s square plus k s power 0 equals to uh, 0 because we want to find out the s value and we want to put the s equals to j omega because we want to find out the number of frequency and the number of k value. So by putting all these values we have w is equals to 6 and k equals to 30. So now if we sketch the basically and all the points on our uh, s-plane then we have uh, basically six parameters for the sketching of root locus we will not basically use the angle of departure and angle of arrival because there is no complex code we will use these rules when we have complex code in our example so there is no complex code so we have just six rules we will implement these rules on the sketching uh, as we can see that this is basically our breakaway point. There is basically the major poles 1, 2 and 3. These poles, red basically shows the number of branches. Uh, green point is basically shows the breakaway point. So we have this 
uh, 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 crocus at the breakaway point as we can see in the blue color um, so at the intersection point at uh, the imaginary axis equals to plus 2.5 j and the, on the um, negative imaginary axis we have value minus 2.5 j so that uh, the next step is basically the asymptotes. This, these are basically the asymptotes, the intersection point of the curve with the line. These are basically asymptotes. So this is basically the value of asymptotes, and uh, and we have uh, uh, basically the angle M equals to 60 right there. Then we have 300 right there and 180 right there. So this is how we can make the sketch of two crocus. So here we have the advantages of root locus. Root locus technique in control system is easy to implement as compared to the other methods for the analyzing the stability of the network. With the help of root locus, we can easily predict the performance of the whole system. Root locus provides the better way to indicate the parameters in the network. Moving towards the software implementation of this experiment, as we know that LabVIEW software has two main windows, block diagram and the front panel. To create the functionality of the program, we have to move towards the block diagram of LabVIEW software. Firstly, we will connect the icon of CD construct transfer function. CD construct transfer function creates a transfer function representation of a system using the sampling time, numerator, denominator, and delay. You can find out this block by right clicking on the block diagram of random software. Function palette will be open, then move towards the control design and simulation, then control design, and then model construct. Pick the icon and place it on the block diagram of LabVIEW software. CD draw transfer function displays the transfer function equation of the model. Right click on the block diagram, function palette will be open, then move towards the control and simulation, then control design, and then model construct. Pick the icon and place it on the window of LabVIEW software. CD step response calculates the output of the system when a step input excites it. Right click on the block diagram. Then moving towards the control and simulation in function palette, then control design, and then time response. Pick the icon and place it on the block diagram of LabVIEW software. CD root locus basically plots the closed loop pole of a single input, single output system as the feedback gain varies from 0 to infinity. You can find out this block by right clicking on the block diagram, moving towards the function palette, then moving towards the control and simulation block, then control design, and then dynamic characteristics. CT get data obtains the data that describes the dynamics of the given system model. You can find out this block by right clicking on the block diagram of LabVIEW software, then moving towards the control and simulation, then control design, and the model information. This icon basically used in this experiment for analyzing or obtaining the data of poles and residues of the transfer function of the system. Partial fraction expansion calculates the partial fraction of a polynomial. You can find out this block from the mathematics block of the function palette of the block diagram, then moving towards the polynomial, then partial fraction expansion. Pick it and place it on the block diagram of LabVIEW software. CD time response parametric data basically used to calculate the parametric information of the transfer function of the uh, system such as rise time, peak time, settling time, steady state gain, overshoot and peak value of the input model uh, basically based on the response time data. You can find out this block uh, by you know, moving towards the control and simulation, then a control design, and then time response. Pick the icon and place it on the block diagram of LabVIEW software. 
So uh, for the programming of uh, root locus, we have to move towards the NAIN Labgo software. And uh, as we know that for programming purposes and to create the functionality of the program, we have to move towards the block diagram of Labgo software. So here we have the block diagram of uh, this software. As uh, we are going to create the uh, or find out the stability of our system and we can represent the system in the form of transfer function. So firstly, we have to create the transfer function on the block diagram of library software. Right click on the block diagram, then move towards the control and simulation, then control design, then model construct, and then CD construct transfer function for the construction or uh, creation of transfer function. As we know that transfer function is basically the ratio between numerator and denominator means output over input. So we have to uh, create the control inputs right there. Right click on the left side of uh, this log, click on create, then move towards the control. Then right click, create, and then control. So in this way, I can uh, create numerator and denominator. Then uh, after creation of uh, this transfer function, uh, basically we need the equation that uh, this icon basically uh, generated. So for the uh, representation of the equation of transfer function, we will use the CD draw transfer function icon. So this right click on the block diagram of Labgo software then move towards control and simulation then control design then model construct then cd uh, draw transfer function place it on the block diagram then uh, click on the output of cd construct transfer function model and uh, cut the generated transfer function with the uh, cd draw transfer function input and then for the output analyzation we will create the indicator block in the lab software so right click on the right hand side of the cd draw transfer function click on create then indicator so uh, we will complete the process of creation of transfer function in lab software then we basically need the step response of uh, this uh, created transfer function so for the step response we will move towards the control and simulation block again control and simulation, control design, time response, then CD step response. Pick it and place it and connect the input of uh, state space or basically uh, the transfer function. If we connect the uh, state space input uh, then uh, to the transfer function, then automatically this term will be changed to uh, transfer function as you have seen in this uh, uh, representation so uh, for the uh, step response graph we have to create the indicator so right click on the step response graph because we are uh, we want to uh, generate the step response graph on the front panel lab view software so we have to um, click on the this output basically then create then indicator after this uh, we will basically need the cd root locus means for the representation of root locus on the graph so for this we will uh, basically right click functionality will be open then control and simulation then control design and uh, then basically we have to move towards the uh, dynamic characteristics then cd root locus place it and then same information the uh, state space model is basically you know, we are not taking state space model for the representation of uh, our system in their current model we are taking basically the trust function so uh, we will connect this input with the transfer function so it will automatically change to the transfer function then uh, right click on the root locus graph and uh, um, create indicator so here we have the representation of root locus graph indicator the next step is basically the cd get data for uh, the 
so for the uh, information achieving of uh, this basically uh, transfer function uh, we need the cd get data cd get data basically used to analyze the pores and residues of the transfer function uh, so firstly we have to move towards the uh, function palette then move towards the control and simulation then uh, moving towards the control design then uh, basically move towards the module information then uh, pick the icon cd get data place it on the block diagram then connect same uh, this model to the transfer function then basically uh, we need a partial fraction icon right there for the separation of numerator denominator and the proper representation of poles and residues so right click on the uh, block diagram move towards the function palette then move towards the control and simulation and uh, not control and simulation basically we have to move towards the mathematics then uh, polynomial then partial fraction expression block place it and uh, connect the icon of basically numerator towards the numerator of partial fraction and uh, the denominator towards the uh, denominator of transfer function then uh, we basically uh, need the so at the output of partial fraction block we have polynomial we have poles we have residues uh, outputs so we need basically these three terms so we will connect the indicator block uh, towards these in outputs basically create indicator then create and uh, indicator and uh, then create and indicator so uh, the poles and uh, residue and polynomial information will be achieved by this icon the last icon will be used in this uh, practical is time response basically the cd parametric time response for the um, information uh, getting uh, to get the information of time response graph means the rise time what is the rise time of the system what is the peak time of this uh, basically system to achieve all these parameters we have basically we will connect the icon of cd parametric time response moving towards the control and simulation then control design then time response and then cd parametric time response click the model towards the transfer function like before and then connect the uh, indicator at the second output of this icon right click create indicator so here we have the proper representation of block diagram of our current experiment so for the analysis of results we have to move towards the front panel of labview software all input terminals we have uh, generated are basically uh, connected towards the functionality of uh, a program on the block diagram uh, we can see all these components on the front panel of library software so uh, just uh, we will write down the values of numerator denominator and analyze the uh, different types of input as we have generated the functionality of uh, these outputs on the block diagram of library software like if we write down the numerator denominator values right there then we can analyze the time response data polynomial poles and residues values the equation of transfer function the step response graph and the two clocus graph so i will just write down the random values of numerator and denominator like for example 210 and for the denominator i will write down that 214 just i run uh, i will run the vi of our program so here we have the proper representation of the system means the root clocus graph we can see that all the poles uh, basically uh, presented on the left half plane means on the uh, negative axis so means after the zero uh, like between uh, zero to 
negative four uh, point zero. Uh, these circles basically shows the values of zeros, and cross basically shows the values of poles. And uh, as we have already uh, learned that the uh, root local basically take the data of open loop of the system and tells about the stability of closed loop. So uh, here we have the proper uh, representation of step response of uh, data. Uh, means our transient response and a steady state response. We can see that at uh, 30 time seconds, uh, we will achieve basically um, the proper output according to our uh, step input. And uh, here we have the equation of transfer function uh, as we have given the values of numerator and denominator according to, to the step response data. Time response parametric data basically contains the rise time of uh, this graph over peak time, steady state gain, sampling time, and the peak values according to the transient and steady uh, state response of the network. And uh, poles and residues uh, values are also represented on the front panel of the um, library software. So uh, this is how we can analyze the result of our uh, root locus experiment. Finally, the conclusion is here, root locus analysis is a graphical method for examining how the roots of a system change with variation of certain parameters, commonly again with in a feedback system. We have also learned the implementation of root locus analysis on NI Labview software. Tasks assigned for this experiment are listed in this slide. This is all for my side. You are welcome to ask any question related to this topic. Thank you very much for listening to me.